My sermonette is entitled, A Vision. No, I didn't have the vision that this would happen today. I was hoping it would be completely different, but that's okay. Did you... So personally, when I was growing up, I always wondered you know, what I would do, what I would become. And I'm speaking in a professional sense. But I never had, you know, a goal in mind. I never had, you know, say from a childhood, oh, I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. Because that just doesn't sound fun. No, just messing. (laughs) But, you know, along the way, jobs have always come along and dropped in my lap at the appropriate times. They've, they've set me on a path that I was going to go down. You know, it, even when a direction had been set for me, whether it was my doing, but most likely it was God's, there was still a certain amount of foresight and understanding around what direction you, know, you need to continue in. What, direction I needed to continue in. So I heard this story. It's about this young man who meets a guru who has a lot of money. He's pretty wise. And he says, I want to be just like you. So the guru says, oh yeah? Okay, meet me at the beach tomorrow at 4 a.m. So 4 a.m. the next morning, the young man's down at the beach. He's dressed in a suit. He should have thought a little bit deeper why they were going to the beach and they wore board shorts. But there he was in a suit, and the old man, the guru, says to him, all right, you want to you wanna be like me? Come on, let's go into the water. And the guy goes, I'm in a suit. And the guy goes, come on. So they go into the water. They're up to their, up to their ankles. And it's like, come on, let's go a little deeper. So they get up to their waist. That's 4 a.m. in the morning. This, this water is cold. They keep going. Now it's up to their chest. The young man's starting to have second thoughts about this old man. Maybe this guy is crazy. So they get out to just about neck level, you know, where you can just barely, the waves are coming over you. And just then the old man takes the young guy and he dunks him underwater. And he holds him there. The young guy is struggling, can't breathe, he's freaking out. And then just at the last second before he would pass out, the old man lifts him up out of the water. And he says, I have something to tell you. When you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, then you will succeed. Now, that's quite a traumatic story, but it shows the point that To achieve something, you have to have a vision. You have to want something that bad. So this week at work, I was working on a project, and that's how this sermon came into being, because a thought came to me while I was working on this certain project. And the thought is this. How can you be innovative? How can you grow, build, seek out new things, become something new without having a vision. You know, you have to have something in mind before you can start to create the guiding set of tools and rules that will help you become or where you're going. Now, a vision is important because it helps ground ourselves. Think about great buildings that have been built throughout the years, monuments, anything that takes time to build or to grow. You know, without a plan or an understanding of what these people were working towards, how would they stay motivated? What about the the pyramids? That took a lot of work, right? Your motivation can come and it can go. 
But if you have an end goal, something tangible that you're working towards, it's easier to keep going. Now this week, I also started reading the Bible from the very beginning. I'm going to work my way all the way through. It might take me a while. But I noticed that the early fathers, the early people in the Bible, you know, they had things such as faith. It's talked about throughout the rest of the Bible. But it's interesting to note that they also had vision. They saw things as not really a reality as of yet, but they believed that these things could become a reality. What motivated Abraham to leave his home country? His immediate family went with him, but the rest of his family, the people he was comfortable with, they didn't go with him. What motivated Isaac to continue living close to God after Abraham had died. If you turn to Genesis 28, and we'll start in verse 10. We're also going to talk about Jacob. Genesis 28 and verse 10. says, Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up to the earth. And its top reached to the heaven, where the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, and the, the land of which you lie, I will also give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. So Jacob here had an actual literal vision, but he decided to test God, to see if God was really going to do these things that he said he was going to do. And you can tell from the stories in the Bible that Jacob had ten sons. They became the tribes of Israel. And they spread out over the whole earth, just like God had said. What if Jacob hadn't had the vision to continue what God had told him to do? You know, we as Christians can say that we believe in the Bible, we can read the Bible, and maybe we act on some of what the Bible has to say. But if we don't have the vision that God has in mind for us, then we will lose our course. We will lose our hope. We will lose ourselves to this world and be overcome by sin. Proverbs 29 and verse 18 from the ASV says this. Where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. So we have to have in our mind's eye every single day what we are working towards. All the pieces of how we do it, the tools that we use, the commandments, the laws, the Bible... You know, while those are all very important, they all help to build the end product. You know, if our sight isn't clearly focused on our vision, on the straight and narrow, our path begins to wander off. 
And the longer we wander off on some side path, the more we can start to fall away. If you will, let's look at Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. I have a vision for you. We know that he knew us before we were even born. He knows what we are capable of. And he knows what purpose for which he has called us for. But do we? Do we trust that God has this vision for us? Let's turn to 2 Peter 3. And we'll begin in verse 1, 2 Peter 3 and verse 1. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder, that you be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Verse 6, by which the world then existed, perished, being flooded with water. So we see that these people, did I read that part? These people are willfully ignorant. They don't want to think about how God destroyed all human life during the flood. Let's continue in verse 11. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Verse 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, look forward to these things and be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless. Holy and righteous people, brethren, earnestly desiring the coming of the day of God. That is our hope and our vision for this world to come to an end so that God's kingdom can come. You know, a vision of one person can be a powerful thing. One person working toward an end goal if that person is sincere and zealous, it can change history. And indeed it has. But even more powerful is a group of people working together. A people with the same vision and the same goal in mind. A group of people who is united in spirit and in zeal. One that cares about each other and is given to building up each other. The vision we have as a church, brethren, is one that is there for all of us to latch on to. So let's not lose our way now, but let's set our eyes on the end goal. Let's catch that vision and work towards it. Mm -hmm.